everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. I'm skipping the intro today because I just really want to get creating. So I'm gonna show you a variety of fun things that I just purchased. One of them being this really pretty embossing folder that is in the form of a snow globe. How pretty is this? I love it. So we're going to be inspired with this as sort of our background piece and it's gonna bring everything together today. I also have a brand new stamp set and I did purchase the coordinating dies as well. And I thought this was really neat for bringing a little winter card together. So I love the little deer. I think they're just so cute. They also have some additional little trees and I think that's fun as well. And then I did pull some alcohol markers and a gel pen because I thought we would do some fun coloring as well. So I think the first thing that we're going to do is get our images stamped and colored and then we'll start working on embossing. So let's go ahead and get started. Be sure to give this a thumbs up if you're excited to see how this creation turns out. Okay, so I have a little piece of 80 pound cardstock here and I'm just gonna place it in my mini Misty. Get that all placed there. And then I'm going to open up these stamps and I think I will use the biggest of the deer. And I'm also going to use the smallest. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this two times just so I could have an extra just in case. And let's go ahead and get this all inked up. That way if I mess up on my coloring, then I have it all ready to go as a backup. But hopefully I do it correctly and nicely the first time. Okay, because I will be using alcohol markers, I'm gonna use an alcohol-friendly ink. So let's go ahead and ink this all up. Ooh, making a mess. Okay. Close this down. I'm gonna bring my little press tool in just to get a really nice, even and firm press. And I'm going to double stamp that really quickly. And you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna gamble here and just do one set. I think I can do this. Famous last words, but I feel like this should be pretty simple coloring. So what I'll do is I'll keep my little stamps in my Misty right now until I like my coloring. That way if I have to restamp, everything is all set up and ready to go. That's probably a better option than I don't waste materials. Okay, so I'll set this off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and just let this set for about, I don't know, three to five minutes. I find it best just to let it kind of sit a little bit and then I will start coloring with my markers. Okay, while this is setting, I'm going to take another piece of 80 pound cardstock and what I think I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this trimmed down and embossed. Now I'm going to trim it down first with my A2 layer panel because I don't want to run this through after it's been embossed to trim it down because I don't wanna ruin that nice embossed look, if that makes sense. So I'm going to grab, oh, I made a little mess there. I think I'm just gonna go one in and I'm going to just place this here just to make sure I do like that. I think there's equal distance around. It looks nice. So what I'll do is I'm going to just send this through on a little piece of cardstock, put a little piece of tape on there, and we'll just trim this down first, and then we will emboss next. So there we go. And I will send it through on my cutting plates through my Gemini Junior. Okay, there we go. And I'll send that through. Okay, that looks so nice. So, there's such fresh cuts that I kind of have to help pop it out a little bit. Okay, there we go. Take my tape off. And there is my nice trimmed down panel. I think that looks super nice. Okay, so now what I'll do is take my embossing folder second. Again, that way once we emboss, we're not running it through the machine again to trim down. And that way it doesn't ruin our nice look. Okay, so I am going to put it down on the side where they're raised. 
and I'm gonna get this really lined up well. And in fact, I might even tape it in there when I like where it is. That looks pretty good. Might move it over just, just a little. Oh gosh, might have been too much. I don't know, is taping even a thing in an embossing folder? That looks pretty good. I'm gonna move it down just a little bit. I, I think that looks good. So I'm going to, I am going to tape it. Hopefully it doesn't emboss the, or like press the tape into there. I think it'll be okay. It should be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna tape that there and make sure that I do like it. Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm actually gonna run this through my spell binders because I feel like I am more confident with embossing in my spell binders right now. I just haven't quite figured this out yet. So I'm going to go run this through my spell binders and then we will take a peek at how beautiful this is. Okay, here we go. Look, isn't that beautiful? That is so neat. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this out. Okay, so the tape, the tape was just fine. I'm going to pull this out and then gently remove it here and that looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and I wonder if while I'm waiting for this to dry, if I could maybe stamp on here. So I'm gonna grab, I'm going to grab, I think you are so dear to me. I think that's really cute. So let's just see kind of what that would look like. And I think that's really fun. You are so dear to me. And then we'll just kind of angle it a little bit. Now, there's another one that says to a dear friend, but I wonder if, yeah, it's too tall. Okay, that would have been cute, but it's just that the only part is the little um, top of that D that got raised up quite a bit. Okay, so no worries. Let's just we'll use this one. And I like how universal that is. What did, it, what, did, what did it say? Okay, you are so dear to me. I already forgot. <laughs> I love that though, because that could just be for anybody. Let's grab the mini Misty one more time. And now we can remove our stamps. Okay, and then if we place this in here, and then let's play around. Now it's kind of bowed a little bit from being embossed. Let's play around a little bit here. And I wanna say, maybe we'll pick it up first. Let's place it down and then pick it up first. And sorry about the leaf blowing in the background. I don't even know if that's being picked up. But um, lots of leaves around the neighborhood and they're getting all picked up today, okay. So I'm just going to kind of tilt that and then I can check. That looks pretty good. I might bring it. It's so slight. The tilt is so, or not the tilt, I'm sorry, the curve. The curve is so slight. Okay, it took me forever to figure out my placement for that, but I'm hoping that this works. If not, well, we're having fun, right? Perfection is overrated. So I'm gonna ink that up, place this down, and then, oh, that looks really good. Okay, and then I am going to just double stamp. Okay, I had to pause for a minute because that leaf blower was just getting so noisy. I did double stamp this. It's not perfect in alignment, but you know what? It's really cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring. And the first color that I am going to use is, let's see, I'm going to start with Y11. And I think that's going to be my shading color for these cute little deer. So I'm going to grab, I always grab the wrong side. I'm gonna grab the precision tip side and let's go ahead and just get coloring. So I am going to start by adding a really nice shadow along his left side of his ear. 
and then tail, and then right down the side of the leg, down here. Okay. And then I'll also just continue focusing on that left side, go down his belly, and left side of leg. And then let's see, I'll do obviously left side one more time. And then I'm going to do the top of his head and then down the neck. And I think that looks really nice. Okay, so then I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to do E210, which is actually called a brick beige. And I'm going to use that for my remaining color. So I'm just going to come and pull some of that shadow out wherever I see the shadow, whether, wherever I applied that shadow, I'm just going to blend that out. And I like to use the brush side for this part. Also being careful because I didn't double stamp. Oh, and you know what I did <laughs> because I was out of order a little bit. I, um, I took those stamps out. That's okay. Happy thoughts. Everything will turn out. Okay. Continuing just to blend those out. And then my remaining area, I'm just going to do one layer of my color. So I'm just going to go back through with one layer and cover the remain the remaining places. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of very lightly just blend that in. Oop, miss this little leg part. And I think that that looks really nice. Okay, so that is going to be my coloring there. And then I am going to take, let's see, E280. And I'm just going to very, very lightly color this little part of his face and the chest area and belly area very lightly because it's very subtly different than my other browns, but I think that that looks really, really nice. Okay, then I have some, uh, or a nice gray pulled for the sweet little hooves, and let's see, I decided on CG050, and I'm not going to really worry about much shading here because it's just such a tiny area. There we go. Okay, and then I also think, I kind of went back and forth on whether I wanted to do a, a gray nose or a red nose, but I'm going to do gray nose. Okay, and then I'm going to take my R21, which is a nice, nice pink, and I'm going to do the ear. And I feel like this color always comes in really, really bright, and then it tones down into a really nice pink. And then I'm also going to do a cheek. Actually, I'm going to wait on the cheek because that's still a little wet and I don't want it to just blend all out. Okay, I'm going to completely start over that same, all that same coloring on my second deer. So again, Y11 for my darkest. I'll go here, I'll go here, a little here, and here, and then I'll also do the belly and down the side of the leg. And then I also think that I'm going to come up and do that. Okay. Okay, and then my next color, which is the, let's see, E210. Again, with the brush side, I'm just gonna blend that out. Okay. And I'll do the same thing that I did on my first year. Just blend that color out. I think that the color combination is just really pretty. It's very subtle, but it's really pretty. But I kind of prefer the subtle. I really do. Okay, then just continue one layer to start. That last color. Okay, and I think that 
looks pretty nice. You can continue to blend as you go. I think that looks really nice. Okay, in fact, I'm gonna blend right here. Okay, and that'll settle out. Um, oh, I totally forgot. I totally forgot this part of his face. So let me bring my darkest back in. I'm gonna do a little bit of shading there. And then, <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, super nice. Then again, E280, and this is going to be very light. Just a light brush. Belly. And I don't think, no, I think that is part of the coloring. Yes, it is. Okay. And then... looks great. Now what I think I will do is the gray. Again for our nose hooves. And I think I actually can kind of come back in and do just a little bit of shading now that that's dry. And I'll like I'll let that dry and then I'll do the same there. Okay, and then I was waiting on this to dry so I'll do a cheek easy peasy and then I'll do this ear and then once his little sweet face dries I will add a cheek there so I'll move on to adding some highlights so I'm just gonna grab my little jelly roll pen here and I'm just gonna add some fun little highlights one right there just to bring some additional fun to this piece and I'll do right here do a couple dots that looks nice and then I'll also do here. And then here. I think that will look really nice. Okay. And then on my little deer, I will add a couple little dots right there. And then let's, let's bring some here. And okay, I think I like that. Bringing back in my pink for a little cheek right there. And that is my final coloring. I think that looks super fun, super nice. I love how clean it is. I love that it's just slight shadowing and just very, very basic coloring, but I like that it also is very dimensional. Okay, now I'm just going to grab my coordinating dies and I haven't even opened these yet, so I'm going to need to trim them apart. That way I can cut these out. I just love the pressed edge. Oops, let's grab the whole thing. The pressed edge of a coordinating die. There's, it's just so pretty. Okay, so pulling this out and then I'll grab my little tool here and we're going to need this little guy down here. Let's see if we can get it out nice. Okay. Just like that. Okay, so we'll have one for here. And then I will also trim out this up here. Okay, and then all the little middle pieces too, that way it doesn't do any little cutting in the middle. Okay, so I will go ahead and center these, tape them down, and I'll send them through my die cutting machine. Okay, how cute did these turn out? Aren't they just darling? I think they're so cute. I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna set these all off to the side. I'm going to bring in my card base and I have that trimmed out of 110 pound cardstock. And those dimensions are 11 by four and a quarter. Half of 11 is five and a half. So that's where we're going to place our little score line there. And then we can go ahead and make our top folding card. So, so pretty. 
Okay, I'm going to press that down really nice. And then we're just going to build this from the ground up. So I'm going to open up my card base and then I'll just magnetize that down. And then I'm gonna put some foam tape on the back of my panel here. Okay, bringing in some foam tape, and that will also really help it to lay flat because it kind of warped just a little bit with that embossing folder. But no worries, it will, it'll lay nice and crisp and flat once this tape is on the back. This kind of also gives it a little weight, which is really nice. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna peel these off. We'll place this panel on. There, oop, little sticky guy. Okay, so that'll really help. Just center that and lay it down. There we go, now it's just so Oh, that's so nice. Okay, so now let's grab some smaller foam squares for the back of these, and then we'll just nestle them all cozy inside that little snow globe. Okay, I am going to put some little foam squares on the back here. And if you haven't seen, I did a fun um, Dollar Tree haul video with 12 things that crafters need at Dollar Tree, and I picked up these really cute magnetic bins if you for lack of a better word I guess containers is probably better and um, I thought they were really cute for these little foam squares so I'm going to go ahead and just and I will be filming my little craft cart I, I got these for my craft cart because I thought they would be really fun for just magnetizing to the side of the cart that way I could just really quickly grab all those little foam squares or odds and ends and I'll film, that. I'll film that soon. I'm waiting on just a couple additional things and then it's coming to the channel. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I always think that the back side of alcohol marker coloring is just as pretty as the front side. I feel like it just looks like a beautiful watercolor and I am here for it. I think it is so cute. I love it. It's just every time I turn around the little colorings to you know, put my foam tape on. I'm always amazed at how pretty that looks. Okay, putting those away and then let's position. Oh, I guess I should have been a little bit more mindful. I might have to take some of that foam tape off. Um, in fact, I will. I don't need it at the ear and I'll just save it. But I also don't really need it on the head, I think. Oh, hold on. Let's see. Because it's gonna overlap. So I should have thought that through. Actually, it's right here. I don't need it there. That way, oops, let's not bend you too much. That way it can overlap and we'll just move this little guy over just a little bit so that it's kind of right on his neck area. Okay, what about, I don't wanna keep that covered. I don't want any final answers just yet. Okay, I'm thinking that looks really cute. Okay, so I'm going to set the first one in place. So I'll just take off the backs and we'll set it down. Okay, so placing, I think there would be really nice. Okay, and then I might just take and just leave only a foam square on the little rump because I think nestling even closer would be nice. And then what I'll do is I will grab liquid glue and I will just place liquid glue everywhere else. That way where it comes to contact with the bigger deer, it will glue down. And wherever the glue doesn't come to contact or come into contact, excuse me, it will just dry. Okay, there we go and do oh, I kind of got him a little bit there we go oh my goodness that's so cute okay being mindful of my placement oh goodness they're just precious so precious okay I kind of want to play around with bringing in these really neat almost glass beads I know they're not glass but that's 
kind of what they look like. I thought that this would be really pretty just to add a few of these within the snow globe area. Okay, so I, it's a little, a little hard to see. There we go. Um, I picked the two smallest sizes. There's, I think there's about four sizes, if I'm not mistaken, of these really neat little dewdrop beads. And I think that that looks really, really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and just glue those down and then we'll be all done. Honestly, I'm just so giddy about this card. I think it's so cute. It never amazes me how happy a card project can make me. I just think it's, this is so fun. It's so relaxing too. Right now, currently as I'm filming, the baby is ha having a little nap and it's just a wonderful way to spend the morning. Get to just fill my cup during rest time and uh, this is just so fun. Okay, so final card. I think that looks so pretty and I think I'm going to stop there because I really don't think it needs anything more. I think it's just stunning as is. Okay, so final card. I love it. I think it is so fun. I love the little dewdrop embellishments. They are so sweet in person. They are much more vibrant. You can see them much more on camera with the lights. It makes it a little harder to see, but I think they're just so fun. And that raised beautiful snow globe embossing folder is, is just gorgeous. I love this. As a reminder, I will be placing links to all of the things that I used to bring this beautiful card together down in the description box below this video. Be sure to let me know how you thought this turned out. I am in love with it. I think this is so cute and I cannot wait to see you all in the next video.